Yes, people, what's poppin'? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Victor Osserman is about to sign a new deal. He may have already signed it with Napoli. That has included a release clause. It's not a really long contract. It's a slight extension. I imagine a lot more money. But it's an asset protection measure by De Laurentiis and Napoli. One that they've negotiated with the African Player of the Year, Victor Osserman, Victor Osserman the centre-forward, where he can go, not for silly money, but good money, and uh, he's got an incentive to carry on playing in the meantime. Chelsea need a striker. They were going to buy one in the summer. But like we've always said in the channel, with the combination of Jackson, Breuer, and indeed the fact how Nick, um, Christopher and Kunku, excuse me, can play down the middle, Chelsea figured, hmm, we'll just take a look and see how we go and readdress this in January. Well, <laughs> Chelsea are at this point now... Um, even though we have scored some goals of late, and you have to say our recent issues is probably a more team structure dynamic thing, Chelsea very much want a striker. Today, we're going to look at the statistics of Victor Osimhen and talk about should Chelsea play the money, uh, pay the money. So, thanks for joining me. Strap yourselves in. Please do consider uh, supporting the content simply by liking and subscribing. So, thank you to all of those who return. Uh, and support the content, you are all very much welcome. All right, so the deal is, uh, and Demar Fabrizio Romano has reported on this, but also Demarcio has confirmed Napoli have had their construction constructive meeting uh, with Victor Osimhen, and they're going to extend his contract to 2026. As things stand, I think he's got 18 months left on his contract, so this would make it three, four, two and a half years. <laughs> Get there in the end, Jan. Um, rather, so it's like a year extension. I imagine you'll get paid more money. Now, there is a release clause worth between 112 million and 120 million pounds sterling. Now, if, if, it, if it is indeed 112 million pounds, that would make Victor Osimhen not Chelsea's record signing. Of course, we signed um, uh, Moises Caicedo for three million, more than that, 115 million pounds. Woo, a lot of money indeed. So straight away, many people will be reacting to this thinking, ooh, 112 million pound buyout clause. That for Victor Osimhen, just one African player of the year, won the Scudetto last season with Napoli scoring a lot of goals, being their main man up front. Um, he's still a really good age. He's, what, 24, 25 for a striker who's won a league title. I think that's really important. Who's tasted glory, scored a lot of goals. Um, naturally, like many people, I have a fear. Um, you know, we signed Morata after he had a, it's a good season for Juventus on loan from Real Madrid, but he didn't score many goals. Um, and, of course, we've got one bit of hair that is just there. It's really annoying me. Um... Lukaku, just got to say the name to scare people. Obviously, he came off in a sensational couple of seasons, uh, winning the Scudetto MVP for Inter. Um, yeah, but 112 million in this market uh, as a club, as we know, like we know Chelsea have got money to spend. Bowley and Igbali will spend more money. They know that we're not in trouble with FFP and we were always going to make waves in the market again, even in January. So I guess if this guy literally is a target of us um, for of ours, they'll be rubbing their hands together at the idea of signing Victor Osimhen for not... I say it is a lot of money. But, you know, everyone thought De Laurentiis was going to be like 150 million, especially if he signed a new deal. So for it to be 112 million sterling... We're going to look at some stats... Some cold hard stats, baby. So I need to just set up a screen share with you. I'm using a couple of websites, Understat and the X Value website that I use. It's a paid service, so it gives you a little bit of insight here. Ding! Oh, I haven't uh, selected it just yet. Here we go. So here we go. Victor Osman. I'm just going to make that slightly smaller for y'all so we can see it better. Victor Osman. There he is. Stats per 90 we're looking at here. Direct goal involvement. Um... 0.76 goals. Now, this is this season. That's okay. But he, he kind of was like, I'm not entirely sure how good this season is in terms of like, in terms of like a, an honest reflection of his ability because 
Um, I think he was a little bit injured. Also, there was the stuff with the TikTok, and he like completely fell out with Napoli. So I'm gonna switch it over to last season. Um, for like a guy who's happy and like good to go. Do you know what I mean? For like for true context. So there you go. A direct goal involvement. Um. Uh, per 90 so you got over one per 90 which is really really good as you can see uh, in terms of goals per 90 0 0.9 which is nearly a good, best part of a goal a game 99 minutes per goal which is good he takes 4.7 shots per game and basically two on target per game T taking like nearly five shots per game that is just such a high volume we just don't have players that do this uh 40 for a guy who takes a lot of shots or nearly 41 percent for a guy who takes a lot of shots uh, in terms of shot success not not bad at all especially when we've used to chelsea players that are just randomly hitting shots into nothing um build up one put one to one his past success is 71 percent, which is fine for a center forward it's only really midfielders and uh, center backs where you have them like 85 85 plus and we don't need to look at defense and discipline um checking out this more advanced stats here i'm going to put it to per 90 so in the in the brackets here that is um the percentile which means he's in the 100th percentile for expected goals and non penalty XG, which means like there's no one better than him. He's top of the tree. Um, he's the best. He is the best, which is really, really uh, interesting to see. Uh, expected this. He's not that creative. Um, he's in the 99th percentile for this metric, which is um, offensive, expected offensive value added, which is a little bit of an intangible. But yeah, you have him. He's a lot better. And yeah, progression, he's not good at as well. But he's a finisher of moves, not a creator of moves. He's an all-round finisher here in the polar chart. Now, I am going to go to this season now, because this is last season. As you can see, the numbers are just incredible. So this season, incredible. He's still, um, he's still an all-round finisher. Well, I'm just going to get rid of last season as well, because that will be uh, juicing him up. And here we go. So even this season, even this season where, like I said, all the TikTok stuff, he's fallen off a little bit, injuries as well. In terms of expected goals, he's still the 99th percentile the 99th percentile so like no matter what you can say like what's chelsea's biggest problem with strikers not finishing the dinner now actually actually nico jackson doesn't have the worst xg he just underperforms it and that's like a confidence thing but surely you know again nico jackson was a winger for very real he played a few months as a striker and suddenly he's chelsea football club starting like number nine who has been given the task of making us you know bringing us back to glory no wonder the youngster hasn't you know got the confidence to look up to that xg now victor osserman a couple years older has won a league title has won african player of the year you'd think you'd think that confidence would be with him. Now, I want to show you another thing. And this, again, looking at the numbers from last season. Last season when you played well. This is understat.com. Now, as you can see here, I'm comparing him to Harry Kane. Harry Kane played a lot more minutes than him, actually. But Harry Kane plays all the ruddy time. And Harry Kane's an amazing, amazing player. As you can see here, the, in the blue the blue uh, graph chart, excuse me, is Harry Kane. The green is Victor Osserman. Now, Harry Kane is understandably and unsurprisingly more creative with more key passes per 90 on the bottom left there and uh, more expected assists per 90. And he's better in the build-up as well here. But in terms of finishing last season, and Kane had a good season last season. It got him his move to Bayern Munich, of course for 90 million despite having only 12 months left on this deal um victor osserman's goals per 90 is better than harry kane his expected goals per 90 is significantly better than harry kane again last season his shots per 90 takes more than kane but you can kind of expect that because um kane drops deep to play make and uh, even though his uh, assists per 90 is higher as well kane is um yeah he was that's probably just because he's hanging out and doing more combination but you know harry kane this is before Ange ball as well um he was yeah, he's still scoring loads and loads of goals but in terms of being i want to show you this because in terms of being a striker a finisher of moves this is really really impressive from victor osserman he's an elite player now I've said it before, I've the, and I echo what James Horncastle, which is the Italian correspondent for The Athletic, 
uh, Italian football. I echo and agree with him. The best striker in, in Italy is uh, Lautaro Martinez, but I don't think he would translate as well to Premier League football as Victor Osimhen. Victor Osimhen is more of a conventional number nine. Lautaro, I think, would just rely on playing certain ways. But if you want to just... If you say to someone, right, Chelsea play this certain way, as you can see, we keep losing 2-0 to these teams we should be beating. But if you look at the stats within the game, Chelsea have had infinitely more passes in the opposition's box and area than, than their opponent. Uh, and they've had a lot of the ball, so they're passing it. Um, I don't think dropping Lautaro Martinez in there does much, but if you drop a proper number nine that's going to operate in the box and just finish chances and be ruthless... If you get last season's Victor Osimhen, <coughs> without the, the controversy of a looming potential transfer, without all this nonsense with TikTok when he and his agent were going to sue Napoli, which can't help your game. You know, that kind of noise when you're the club you're playing for, you're going to sue. And, you know, that that's not going to help your performance on the pitch. So if he, you know, and <laughs> yes, we've got to be realistic with this, dropping him into this dysfunctional and quite crazy Chelsea side, he's not necessarily going to be his most performative and zen self. But, you know, like I said, he's a couple years older than Chelsea's current strikers in Bria and, and Jackson. He's, um, he is a striker by trade. He's not a converted striker like uh, Jackson. Of course, we've seen Bria do his best work with a strike partner. And Kunku, though Pochettino may have been thinking, yeah, I'll play this guy down the middle. He's not a centre forward. Profile. Victor Osman is a striker. He's a number nine. He's a centre forward. Now, I wasn't massively on this because A, I thought he was going to be 150 euros. B, did he want to come to Chelsea? Loads of clubs want him. But the fact how there is a release clause for around or up to 130 million euros, which would be, you know, around 120 million pounds, I think, or between 112. Yeah. For the for the sake of it, for the thought experiment, let's say DiMarzio's quote of 112 million pounds is the release clause. That's a game changer for me to a degree. And the fact how we know the player himself loves Chelsea. I know he said he used to watch Man United and Chelsea. Man United aren't going to drop that on a striker for two reasons. One, because they spent a lot of money on Rasmus Hoyland. I think they spent like 80 million on him. Remember, we only spent 30, 35 million on Jackson. So in terms of a kitty and uh, money for a striker, Chelsea have it. And also, United are screwed. I heard Adam Crafton of The Athletic speak about this. United are in big trouble for financial fair play. Chelsea apparently aren't. They're convinced they're not. So, yeah. So, in terms of the money, Chelsea have got over United. Um, and, yes, I think he's, you know, he says, I think he probably, because he said growing up, he had a Man United shirt and a Chelsea shirt. But he obviously went on the um, uh, Mikel, uh, um, uh, the, the Obi-Wan uh, podcast um, and said, like, yeah, you know, and he was, Mikel was joking, saying, oh, I'm going to get you to Chelsea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, be the agent in that deal, joking around. But, yeah, we've seen the picture of um, of uh, Victor Osimhen in, in the Chelsea shirt. I think he would love to come to Chelsea. I think he'd be very mindful of the dysfunction at Chelsea. And it's not like our transfer opposition in uh, in Man United are a completely calm house themselves. You know, the ownership, we don't even know. Because I, I heard a reason why Ten Hag can't be sacked at the moment is because... I'm not saying he should be, because, you know, they're still, like, can get top five, top four... And uh, they're still in the cup and, you know, he won them a trophy just last season. But there's no one to sack him, apparently, because of the way the club's transitioning with the 25% ownership with uh, Jim Ratcliffe. Uh, so everyone's waiting for that to come in before anything can happen. So even though Chelsea are massively underperforming, it's a little bit of a crisis. There's obviously investigations and stuff. The owners, there's a, probably an element of staying calm. Like, you know, we got the players we wanted to buy, even if not all of them are performing how we want them. We're happy largely with how they're applying themselves, um, even though Pochettino's probably not doing as good as we thought, and that's maybe largely down to us analysing what we actually have and seeing it in practice rather than theory. They're probably disappointed with how things are going, and Matt Law of The Telegraph reported an insider said it's been a disaster season, um, not season, year, 2023, and that's been true in terms of points return. But in terms of the long-term plan, I don't think they'll they'll see it as a complete disaster. They'll be happy they got a lot of their targets. They'll certainly be frustrated with injuries like Gusto, Reese James, Chilwell, and Kunku Lavia. 
that's some stuff you can't foresee and that'll be frustrating um there'll probably be some stuff in their hands that can prevent injury some stuff will be bad luck but that stuff you know players will get well again eventually you know well, maybe Reese James will uh, won't rather we don't know but they'll, they'll look at this general pan and think you know what uh, everyone, everyone on the outside thinks it's terrible and yes we don't think it's good but we can see the stuff that we wanted to do that's still happening and this money's still here to buy striker and now there's a release clause and you know Pop will give Pochettino a midfielder as well and he's not on he's frustrated but he's not unhappy with us as employers because he's got these talented players and a lot of people in mainstream football media at the moment are saying who could do better at Chelsea right now and even like the Chelsea fans who are Pochettino out and of which there are a few by the way and I kind of sympathize with them because for two years now Chelsea have been bad and when and you know they'll rightly be frustrated with certain decisions from Pochettino but even those fans, or certainly most of them, would probably think, oh, well, who's just going to come in and do better with all this lot? Maybe give Pochettino a couple of his signings, his targets, because he hasn't gone yet. They were all given to him, which I really want to say, again, it would be remiss for me not to say, he knew was going to happen. He knew exactly the job he was walking into, and he said that a few times. So, you know, give him a few of his players. Give him, you know, players back from injury. And like, I know it's reductive, but just give him a centre forward, like a proper confident centre forward and see what he can do. And if he can't do it, then out you go, mate. So guys, I showed you the statistics on Victor Osman in this video. We've spoken about the release clause. What do you think? Comment down below. As always, I put it out to you guys. I'm very, very uh, interested in hearing your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Um, follow me on social media, well, on Instagram, at Football Yannick. Um, I the same name as my second YouTube channel, which you are also welcome to subscribe to, at Football Yannick. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Hope to see you back here very soon. Take care of yourselves. Peace.